I am Randy Robinson. Welcome to Life Today, Digital Edition. I'm here with Dennis Jernigan, a longtime friend of the ministry, and he's got a new book called Renewing Your Mind. Dennis, good to see you. Good to be here, Randy. Thanks for having me. So anybody who's, you know, kept up with you, watched the program, uh, they probably know a bit of your story. Sure. Struggle with homosexuality at a young age. How many kids do you have now? I have nine children. Still still just the nine. Still I have to check nine. every time all I right. see you. <laughs> so um, I don't want to get bogged down in, in all that because that was many, many years ago. Sure. I love, though, that you're, you're going from this angle of renewing your mind because that applies to all of us. That's the point. It's overcoming any kind of sin mm -hmm. at all. It means renewing your mind daily. So give me, give me a little insight of what you're talking about. Well, the battleground for anybody, if they're, if they're realistic about what they struggle with, it's the battleground is your mind. A simple way to put it is I can change the way I feel by simply changing the way I think. Proverbs 23, 7 says, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. Uh, Romans 12, 2 tells us to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So I, I just got that many years ago and ran with it. Hmm. Uh, in fact, I went 12 years, one of the episodes of my life where I became so convinced that that was reality and it would work. And the, the Lord came to me and he said, I want you to just do away with, stop listening to secular music, stop watching secular television, Stop watching movies. In other words, stop all the other voices vying for your attention. Right. And I went on this, what became a 12-year fast. Wow. I literally missed the 80s. As I've gone back and looked and listened, I didn't really miss much. Oh, no offense. On, no offense. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but my point is this. If you shut out all the other voices and ask the Lord to speak, He will. He, he, he says His sheep know His voice and we can hear Him. So I began to go on this, what I call my incredible journey, uh, not discovering who Dennis Jernigan was, but discovering who his God is. Mm. And he calls himself Jehovah Rapha, for instance. I'm the God who is your healer. You've got my spiritual DNA, son. You're an agent of my healing. That's who I want you to be. Mm. And in fact, uh, I've had people in the gay community tell me I'm brainwashed, and I have to kind of agree with them. Because that's <laughs> not exactly, the way they mean it, though. <laughs> exactly. But the reality is, I call it stinking thing, and I learned that from Jack Taylor many years ago. Uh, if you're stinking thinking, put off the stinking thought and replace it with what's true. So that's that's the basis of the book. And I just mapped out, I took 20 chapters because I have so many people contacting me all the time, not just in the area of same-sex attraction, but because of my story, people feel like they can tell me anything and tell me their struggles. So I love that. So I decided I need to come up with a concise way to convey the truth that God used in my life to set me free. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, that's the basis of the book. Question for you. Yeah. Um, because this is all, you know, this debate about whether same-sex attraction is, is a choice or not a choice. You know, say we're born this way, and I think, well, we're all born sinners, so maybe, you know. Yeah. Um, what, how, much, what, how much is it, you know? The way I answer that question is, does anyone get to choose what they're tempted by? Have you ever thought of it that way? Hmm. I didn't no, get, I guess we don't, do I we? didn't get to choose what I was tempted by, but we are people of choice. Hmm. We are always people of choice. What I mean by that is I may not have a choice as to what's a temptation to me. I may not have a choice as to my circumstances of life, but I always have a choice as to how I respond to temptation, that's always great. have a choice as to how I respond to circumstances. Yeah, that's true for all of us, no matter yeah, what it is. That's the truth. Hmm. So... How do you, if you can compare how you thought, you know, before, especially before the 12 mm -hmm. years of shutting out all the other voices, yeah. you know, then and now, what's different sort of about just the, the, the way you process things? Well, it's automatic. In fact, one of my personal rules is Dennis Jernigan does not get to call himself something his father does not call him. My children know that. My wife knows that. So if I'll do something boneheaded and I'll say to myself, you stupid idiot, you know, like a guys, will, guys will do sometimes. My wife's the first one to say, is that who your father says you are? Mm. Is that the truth? And instantly I'm reminded, nope, that's not who I am. Mm. In fact, if I could put it this way, before I knew all this about renewing my mind, it's like as a believer, I, I thought I deserved to sit below the table of the king and just settle for whatever crumbs fell from it. Mm. And that's not the truth. I'm a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I'm invited to sit boldly at the table as a child of the king and partake of the feast of his mm -hmm. presence in this life. Mm -hmm. And let me just throw this out there too. I don't see homosexuality, same-sex attraction as an identity. 
I see it as a temptation, nothing more, nothing less. Changing your mind about your identity, what sort of insight can you give us as to, as to how that changed everything for you? It, it transformed every, ab absolutely every area of my life. In fact, one of the ways that I began to renew my mind initially was I would ask the Lord, let's just start from scratch. Let's just, Lord, what would you like me to wear today? Huh. Lord, what would you like for me to eat today? What would you like for me to listen to today? Is there someone you want me to encourage today? In fact, that's one of the ways of escape for temptation for me is if I'm feeling discouraged, the Holy Spirit's real quick, well, I want you to find somebody who's discouraged and I want you to encourage them. Mm. All of a sudden, I've taken my eyes off of me, which sin gets us self-focused, mm -hmm. taken my eyes off of me, placed them on the Lord and on other people and on their needs, and all of a sudden, my needs get met. I'm no longer discouraged. I'm quite encouraged, as a matter of fact. I don't know <laughs> if that answers that, your question. Funny how that works. Yeah, no, that's, that's wonderful. Oh, I, I, another area that I, I, I'm guessing you had to deal with has come out in, in another book that you've got out. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a children's book. Yeah. But it has a lot very much to do with your adulthood. Very much so. In fact, it's one aspect of renewing my mind. God wastes nothing. He's not wasted my failure. He's not wasted my past experiences. He's not wasted even my temptations. He's, if I bring him anything in honesty, he's able to transform it and show me his point of view. And we can either live from the king's point of view or we can live from the enemy's point of view. That's the way I see it. Mm -hmm. That's just the way I decided to live my life. One of the things I used to struggle with as a child, even through my college career, let's be honest, was the fact that my dad didn't love me. And the reason I thought that is because he never said the words, I love you. After the Lord set me free and I began to get brave in my convictions and brave in who, my, who I truly was, I took my dad on a trip, and that's been about 20 years ago, and I asked him all the hard questions. Mm. Big question, Daddy, why did you never tell me you loved me? You know what he said to me? He said, my dad never told me, so I didn't know how to tell you. Mm. All of a sudden, one honest question, one simple answer, we took back, we broke the generational curse, let's be real, on our family, took back stolen ground. But another aspect is the Lord had me go back and look at my life from his point of view. Your dad's point of view? Or from God's, God's point of view? God's point of view. God's point of view. Yeah, and see the, the reality of that my dad did love me. Mm. He expressed it in ways. In this book, The Incredible Growing Basketball Goal is a true story. My dad just passed away August 31st. So it's very poignant for me to even be sharing right now. But he, uh, when I was five years old, I asked him for a basketball goal. I knew my birthday was coming. I knew my chances were good. <laughs> He said, no, son, I don't have enough money to buy you a basketball goal. So I was crushed. And he said, oh, but we can get you one. And I said, how? He said, well, I've got enough money. We can afford a basketball goal seed. We'll plant one and grow one. I'm five. That sounds completely reasonable to me. Sure. So we went with it. The next day he came home with this seed. He said, let's go pick out a spot for your goal. And we picked out a spot and I got to dig the hole. He said, you put it in there. Now you cover it up and your job is to water this every day. Mm -hmm. So I was watering it every day. <laughs> and after a week, I came out in a three-foot section of green pipe. I'll never forget it had sprouted. <laughs> I began watering twice a day. <laughs> if you came to our farm, the first thing I'd do is show you, you got to come and see the basketball girl, goal my dad and I are growing. They'd look at me, what's <laughs> wrong with your boy? And they'd go, no, he's telling the truth. So every week, another three-foot section, another three-foot three section, until my birthday morning comes, I run downstairs out into the farmyard or the barnyard where we had planted the goal and it had blossomed in the night. Brand new backboard, brand new rim, brand new net, and then on the ground like a giant apple that had fallen from the tree, a brand new basketball. And I like to say at this point when I'm telling the story, yeah, my dad never told me he loved me, right? The greatest expression of love is beyond words. Words are awesome, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. But the greatest expression of love is the laying down of my life and my dad of, of life, and my dad did that in droves. Mm. So that's the basis of this book. I was able to show my dad the book in, on his deathbed, and mm. we got to reminisce about it. He couldn't say a word, but he just shook his head. I said, "Daddy, do you remember?" He said, "Yes, I remember." Mm. So my prayer is that millions of dads and granddads would be inspired to minister to their kids in similar ways. Just get creative. That's, that's the great. basis of the book. Oh, that's wonderful. A lot of healing, I think, taking yeah, place right there. Very much so. Uh, what's your website for people that are interested in the books or in your ministry? DennisDernigan.com. All Dennis. things Dennis Dernigan, yeah. <laughs> Great. Check out his website. And if you want to hear more from Dennis, you can see him on our broadcast show. That's available at lifetoday.org. Thank you for watching and sharing this interview. Be sure to check out the social media for Life Today Television, and you can connect with me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you haven't already subscribed or followed this channel, do it now so you can see more of our great guests.